It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Naufer Raboubi for his talk about combination of needling and uh, exarmor light for treatment of vitiligo. Thank you very much, Leila. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a randomized trial, it's just to introduce a few concepts. Uh, it's needling and exarmor light uh, in vitiligo and to discuss modes of action and some new dermatoscopic features. So the idea of needling came to us with this article that was published in the Pakistani journal, uh, needling an adjunct to narrowband UVB in localized fixed vitiligo. And in this paper, there was reference made to the original article by Savant from India, and this is where they had got the idea from as far as needling was concerned. So. Excimer laser and excimer light are now well-established treatments as was shown to us yesterday by Dr. Imran Majid. So there are several studies now that attest to the excimer laser. So we know that excimer laser is more effective than narrowband UVB and the excimer laser and excimer light now show similar efficacy. <coughs> so this was the, uh, these are the pictures from the original study showing how they did the needling. They went first from the edge into the center of the lesion and then where follicular repigmentation took place, they went with a needle into the follicular repigmented areas and then needled from that area until the entire area was repigmented. Now this is one of my patients where I'm sort of mimicking this uh, type of treatment. It's very simple, inexpensive. It's needles that are lying in the practice that we use for mantus and the insulin syringes with 30 gauge needles and simply from the pigmented side, about half a centimeter, into the areas that are depigmented. And this is not applying any medication on it, it's just simply creating channels inside the skin. And you'll notice that the needles are put in perpendicular to the edge. So it's always perpendicular to the edge. And these are some results using excimer and needling. And we found that the combination of excimer and needling really shortens the time for these procedures. Uh, here another example where we did the corner of the mouth and the lip at the same time. Uh, probably these two were not the best two places to compare because there are no hair follicles in the lips. But we did several patients like this where we did one with laser and one uh, you know, with laser and needling and we found that the repigmentation from the needle side was a lot faster. Sometimes we had some post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which settled down in time. And this is an example of a patient that had a recurrence of vitiligo that we needled and you can see the pigment cells migrating in that area. Uh, and here's an example of uh, eczema and needling on the foot. Uh, this one was on the chin with complete repigmentation and this is another view of the same patient within 12 treatments of eczema and needling together. Uh, another patient on the chin. And here on the uh, left side of the cheek, eczema and needling together produced a very favorable result. It took 18 treatments. This is a light-skinned patient. It generally takes a little longer for us to produce results on lighter skins. Now, what about the patterns of repigmentation that we see following needling? Now, you can see here in this picture where needling was done, you can see the melanos, well, we can assume the melanocytes have migrated through these channels. And this is a kind of pigmentation that we see. This is a pigment pattern that we see with needling. So the repigmentation is in straight lines along the path of the needle. And it's usually the length of the needle that's repigmented. It's the same size as the size of the needle. So the repigmentation is also seen perpendicular to the border. It's not just peripheral and it's not just follicular, but it's along the whole line of it. And sometimes there are gaps in between, sometimes the lines are continuous. Uh, the first thing we see is pigmentation increasing in the border. And this is followed by pigmentation running along the streaks. So you can see that there are sort of streaks that develop. And you can see those streaks developing here as well. So the direction of the dots that develop tells us that the needling has produced some successful repigmentation. Uh, here at the bottom of the slide, you can see on the right hand side pigmentation running horizontally. That's the direction of the needling. Now, the proposed mechanism in the original paper was that the needle was actually pushing the melanocytes into the depigmented area. But I've got another proposal about what I think happens and maybe the others can bear me out about what they think happens when this needling takes place. So, 
I believe that the needle, the needle acts like a punch graft basically, like horizontal punch graft. So when the needle is inserted, it takes a core of tissue. And that, when the needle is advanced, the core of tissue is advanced with the needle. And when the needle is withdrawn, then the core is left behind in the vitiligo area. And it seems plausible that that's what happens because we are using a hollow needle. Right, now if we compare needling alone to needling and eczema, this side wasn't needled but it had eczema and this side had the eczema and needling. And we've demonstrated repeatedly that that's what happens. Over here we needled one side only and the left side of this lesion wasn't needled and we can see the difference. Now how do we know which, which modality is working? And I just wanted to introduce a dermatoscopic feature that I haven't noticed anywhere else. And you'll notice that there's a triangle that forms here. This, these triangles, okay, this is not working. Can you see on the right-hand side of the image that there's a little triangle forming on the top and it's perpendicular to the actual edges of the lesion. And we notice that with eczema, the repigmentation is always round, it's circular. Uh, whereas when we look at the repigmentation that happens with needling, the first thing we see is little triangles forming on the edge. Uh, I'm not sure if that's clear or one has to use one's imagination too much. But if you look at the left side of the lesion here at the bottom, you'll see again a triangular area forming with the apex towards the vitiligo area and the base towards the uh, area from which we start needling. So this uh, we don't usually see with eczema. Now here the middle picture shows the eczema repigmentation and the lesions on either side show the repigmentation that starts when needling is done. So I thought I'd just mention that this is another example of needling. So it helps us to distinguish between what is just eczema and what is uh, needling to see which one is working well there. So we've also used this following non-cultured melanocyte grafting when there are gaps left and we've successfully managed that this patient went on to get full cover, uh, this as well. Those few areas that were left eventually did get covered with the needling. But we can see it even in this picture, there's a lot of repigmentation. So in conclusion, needling increases the speed and extent of repigmentation when combined with eczema light. And demoscopy of repigmentation from needling is characterized by these triangular areas of repigmentation with the base of the triangle against the pigmented area and the apex towards the vitiligo area. The earliest change from needling is an increase in pigmentation of the border following by linear streaks along the edge. And the linear row of dots that are sometimes seen with needling, uh, it corresponds with the length of the needles that are used. And uh, repigmentation from eczema light appears in the form of dots, which enlarge into circles. So thank you very much. And I think these are areas for potential future studies to look at different size of needles and different gauges of needles and whether they are hollow or solid and whether we fill it with saline or with water and to see if that makes any difference. Thank you once again. Any question? Thank you, Dr. Naufer, please. Thank you so it's much. A, a yes, Yvon Gauthier. We are going in the level of the dermoepidermal junction. Uh, we tried vertical needling using a stamp method and vertical needling using a micro needling device and we got no results from it. And it seems as though this melanocyte migration takes place only if you go horizontally. It's in the, it's like the dermoepidermal junction. You can just see the needle there. Yeah? Very superficial. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your information. Dr. Asamia. Dr. Nuffel, you have amazing results. It's, the results look amazing, but actually I was impressed by the, this needling. Once we had uh, a doctor from Brazil, I, I cannot recall her name. I read your paper. Yes, and, she, <laughs> she, uh, and, and we uh, started to do the needling, and we added it to the acral parts, uh, because all, both sides had phototherapy, and in one side we did the needling, and the other side, no, no needling. And actually, although all the cases were stable, but we had activation of vitiligo in a big percent of cases. And this was, and, and there was no repigmentation. So I want to get this result. I don't know how you get it. Did you use it with eczema? No, 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 it was not eczema. Maybe try it, it with eczema. Maybe that's what it makes a difference. It was 
They, okay. rece they receive narrow band on one side yes. and narrow band with needling on the other side. Right. Maybe try it with the eczema and you'll get different results. I hope because so. we've looked at one side eczema, one side needling. Yeah. It's just magical the way it goes. It goes yes. like six treatments and it's all done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and it's, it costs nothing, of course. The needles are lying in the office. <laughs> the, the problem is it's very time consuming. Not at all. I mean, I wouldn't do no. the whole body, of course. If there's a, you know, if we've done an area with eczema and there's a part left, we do the needling there. If we've done some grafting and there's a border left, we do that area. It's certainly not designed but to treat whole areas. You know? But you did it at each eczema session? No. We did no. the eczema once a week and we did the needling once a month. Okay. Thank you. Any question? Uh, now, yes, Phil, does it really work for your perilesional halo? Y yes. Yes, it works for the very lesional halo. That's great. That's, great. <laughs> and that's especially where we want to use it because, you, you know, you get that rim left, now you want to do something with it, not go back and graft if you can. Try it and let me know. Thank you very much.